Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Bob seeing humor and hope in a crazy world. And I'm Bob. I'm Father Dave. Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Same place, two weeks in a row, baby. I know, it's really exciting. And I mean, it's almost like we live here. Yeah, that's, yeah, we do. Yeah, it's getting there. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Oh, you know what I'm supposed to say? Mm. Um, I guess everybody does this. Hey, if you like this, give us a like and send it. I, I was talking to somebody who just like does this. You have no idea what you're no, doing. No, I don't, because we're not very good at promoting. But um, there was like, no, you're supposed to always start off by like telling people to like to like it and send it and do stuff. So do that you however you do it, that. You end with that. You don't start no, with that. No, no, you start with it because most people only watch the beginning of stuff and then they move on. We should try to figure that out. How We should put like little Easter egg things. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Easter the, eggs, like little yeah, hints yeah. throughout the podcast. Because it is the season of Easter, so I won't correct yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's good. To see if people are paying attention to right. the whole show. Right, or you can just look at the YouTube site and it actually tells you exactly when people drop off. Oh, it does? Yeah, it's actually pretty How fascinating. Are we doing? I don't want to look. I'm kind of nervous about that. Uh-huh. But anyway, like us, subscribe, uh, t- tell a friend. That's actually the best way to do it. Word of mouth. Yeah, so I, we had some Easter. So it, did we talk about this last week about people coming up to me and actually say they're listening to this? Yes. Yeah, it was we, really funny. Did we talk about that last week? Yeah, actually. And I could tell you in the, in the thing, that's when it dropped. Like the viewership okay. just radically fell pretty low. You know what? Interesting else is another funny thing. You know what the best way to get viewers well, is yeah. to is to have viewers. It's a weird thing. No, this is genuine. So the most popular YouTube video right now, you probably know this really well, BTS. Oh, okay, sure. The, the K-pop phenomenon. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Dynamite, their first song in English. Yeah. It's amazing. They've done as well as they have. Um, but they have a billion views on YouTube. Like a billion. If you added up all of ours, do we have a billion? It's... Not close. Not far, no. Yeah. Did I tell you the story of my my uh, my seven year old wants to be a YouTuber? His yeah, name is Aiden. He's we very spent time together. It was really funny. You yeah. telling me about it. Yeah, yeah. He he's and gonna, a priest. He's going to be a YouTuber and a priest. He's going to move to Texas because apparently all the YouTubers live in Texas and they have pools because they have pools yeah, and yeah. then they buy stuff to put in their pools yeah. and that was awesome and something like that. So um, as he found that I was on YouTube, you know, it was like the pride and joy of a son. He was like, Dad, you're Until on YouTube. And he's been watching it. He thought the car thing was really funny. I think oh, he okay. just watched one episode because he keeps bringing that one episode okay, up. There you like, go. Come on, bro. We've said other jokes. And uh, But he came to me and he, went, he ran into the living room and he went, Dad, you have a million subscribers. And I went, um, son, K means thousands. There you go. See <laughs> not, that? Not million. And his face like fell. Like, I mean, it was this moment he thought I was like the coolest dad ever. And he's like, a thousand. And sadly, he knows enough math to realize it's a huge discrepancy. And then he went, you'll get there someday, Dad. There you go. I was like, I'm not trying. No, yeah. no you'll do it. Oh, What okay. a sweetheart, huh? He's sweet. He's such a sweet little boy. That's cool. And yeah, he does want to be a priest. He was... Uh, yeah, his, his plans of, for his future were really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. He was upset. Uh, like last week, he was crying because mom and I keep telling him what to do and all his older siblings tell him what to do, but he can't tell anybody what to do. And um, I said, well, you know, when you're older, you can tell people what to do. And I mistakenly said, you know, when you have kids, you can tell them what to do. And he's like, I'm going to be a priest. I can't tell anybody what to do. And I'm like, oh, you have no idea, bro. Yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, says the president yeah, of Franciscan yeah. University. Well, I guess there's a difference between telling people what to do and actually people doing what you tell them to do. Mm. Big It's a fine line, but it it's is. an important one to, it uh, is. to, it is. to note. So. It is. So you're drinking what, coffee or tea this morning? Uh, I am drinking uh, powdered, it's called Gamer Sups. It's like a caffeine thing. Nice. It makes me tingly. Nice. We're, we're recording fairly late tonight. Usually we do morning shows. This is the evening show because uh, you, you had a busy Long day. day. Long day. You had a busy day. Yep. But it's great to have you here. So let's talk about baseball because you like baseball. And the Nationals are playing. I heard that on the radio. Yeah. They they missed the first several games because right they were of, like the last ones to start yeah yeah because of COVID but they're not doing so well pitching's been a little bit tough and they're playing they're still playing a little bit weird they're playing these double headers that are seven inning games but hey they're my boys and I'm going to stick with them I think actually the last I checked they'd only won one game they were like one and four or something like that but it's early but that means you're a fan if you stick with them 
Absolutely. If if you stick with a losing team, absolutely. That's you, the real sign of fandom. Absolutely. What are you talking about? Like just coming and going as you please, depending on how the team does it. Where are you from? Well, Were you raised by wolves? No, I was raised outside of Chicago. Well, that's not a stretch. There you go. There you go. But you have to be. You have to through thick and thin. That's, that's what, what I'm like for. You know, interestingly enough, even like with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, I was going to say, easy to times. say talking to the Tampa whoa, whoa, Bay Buccaneers. They Super still Bowl have champions. twice. They, ironically, they still have the lowest winning right. percentage in the that. NFL. That's what I heard. So that's kind of cool. And as you know, I've been going to Cavs games. And um, that was funny. They're Bob not and, doing well. Bob and I are doing this text exchange <laughs> the other night, and he's with his daughter, and he sends a lovely picture. And I said, Oh, that's great, but they're going to lose because they were up by 13 points. Yeah, the they time. were up by 10 points in the first quarter, eight in the, in the half, four in the third, and by the by end, 10. they lost by seven something or eight or something like that. Yeah. I saw that coming. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't hard to see. Did you know that Franciscan University has a new online Master of Arts in Catholic Studies? Yes, I knew that. Good, good. Our MA in Catholic Studies takes students take, wait, our MA in Catholic Studies students, ooh, say that five times fast. You're unbelievable. Our MA in Catholic Studies students, our MA in Catholic Studies what students. What makes our you MA think that students. one of these days I'm, I'm going to do student. those parts and you're going to do my here, part? Here. No, 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 not no. this time. We have to do it. We have to do it later. Yeah, go. Our MA in Catholic Studies students take courses from many academic disciplines, such as literature, biology, art, psychology, and history, all tarf, taught from a distinctly Catholic perspective. It's really late at night. The full program should, can be completed in just one year, dang, and you can focus your studies on the subjects that interest you the most. Learn to see the world through a Catholic lens with Franciscan's new 100% online Master of Arts in Catholic Studies. To learn more, visit franciscan.edu. That's franciscan.edu. Honestly, I think this is going to be one of our most popular programs. Yeah, tell me more. I just think it's I think it's going to be interesting to a population of people, I don't know, been out of school for a while, but just want to learn more about the faith. It's it's going to be uh, interdisciplinary, taking yeah. a look at like history and sacraments and those right. kinds of things. I really do. I think I'm as, as we were planning and preparing and developing this program, I thought, oh, my goodness, I think we're really on to something here. So it'll be exciting to see. I encourage people. Yeah, if you just love the, for, the faith, but you just wanted to learn more, not that you're learning, not not learning a lot from our podcast because— Of course. I think, it's almost I think like we're meeting a niche. I think yeah. you can actually get accredited if you listen to enough of these podcasts with a degree of some sort. I, yeah, we, we would need to think about what, like, what would a quiz look like at the end of one of our podcasts. Yeah. Hope at franciscan.edu. Give there us you some go. examples of, of quiz question, questions. Quiz questions. Yes, That's a great question. That, qu that yeah. we could, <laughs> that us, we could ask. Send us your own quiz questions and we'll, we'll, we'll develop a quiz. But I absolutely agree. I think um, obviously studying theology is a beautiful way to get to know the faith. But um, a program like this, which like, you know, brings in, you know, literature. I mean, the, yeah, the beautiful art, realm yeah. of Catholic literature, Catholic art, and really just a greater appreciation of what God's been doing, you know, for 2,000 years in the church. It's its really, really cool. So, yeah, yeah I, and, I agree. And I've said, and I always joke about it, it's like what I love about being Catholic, but I just love being Catholic. And, and our history and the richness and, and the quirks, you know, i it's one of those things that, that we as Catholics can get away and we can say, you know, that's kind of weird that you Catholics do that. And we're okay with it because we're part of the family. If somebody else says it, I'm going to be you yeah, know, irritated. Be right, right, right. But right. we can say it like, yeah, we, we just do things that are kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, I always joke that in Rome, you've got body parts in this church and other body parts in that church. And, and the I, bone crypt. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. the coolest place. I don't know if you know what we're talking about, but if you ever have a chance to go to Rome, well, it's a Carthusian? No, it's a Capuchin. Oh, it's Capuchin. A Franciscan, yeah. Okay, it's a Franciscan uh, crypt that is decorated with the bones of friars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and not like, I mean, like decorated, like, you know, there's uh, scapulars on, you know, the no, ceiling. The light switches, the railing, everything. the lights. It's, it's, it's different. It's very different. If it's very different. But the plaque at the end is what gets me. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know if you remember the exact. Oh, I do. I oh, do. well, then tell me the exact wording. I was going to flub it. The probably. exact wording is what you are, we were, what you are, we once were, what we are, you will become. Yeah. Which is actually. Pretty cool. Memento Mori. Remember, Remember your, your death. death. Yeah, yep. yeah. And that's a part it's of it. It's not just is, a haunted mansion reference, everybody. No, it, that, is, that is one of the things. Is, is just, it does kind of look weird, weird, weird. And then when you get to that end, it's like, oh, that's right. We're all just 
dust and bones when it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, on this earth, and then we, yeah, well, amen. what we will become. Yeah, sounds yeah. cool. And it sticks with you. You know, it sticks with you in a powerful way. Yeah, yeah, amen. Yeah, very cool. Yep, so, but which raises what we were going to talk about today uh, in this particular part is we find ourselves in the Easter season. Yes, the season of Easter. 50 days. Yep. So we, we, f- we feast more than we fast. Yep. And how might we live out our Easter season graces, Father Dave? Well, first off, I think that we are a people who, what, what the Easter season invites us to do is, first off, remind us that Lent isn't, isn't all the story. Right. Right, that the difficulties and the struggles, that's not all. It, I mean, the, the association between this and hope. But that when we say we're an Easter people, what does that mean? You know, we use, the, we use language like that. And the first thing that comes to my mind is a sense of joy, is, is that the Catholic Christian, and, and Pope Francis sp- speaks about this all the time, uh, needs to be animated by joy. Yeah. I mean, if we really believe what we've just walked through over the last, you know, 10 days with, with the Easter Triduum and the institution of the Eucharist and the, and the priesthood, I, I love the washing of the feet, the death, the resurrection, the empty tomb, the to- all of that. Did you wash feet on campus? Just no, we did no, yeah. yeah, okay. didn't. I didn't think anybody did. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, we didn't hear. I know some people did in the diocese, but I know that some people did. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the, the, there is, ought to be a joy with that. Yeah. You know, one of the things that Pope Francis says is that we ought not look like we're always coming back from a funeral. So right. I, think, I think part of that, and the thing is, is, is that can't just be manufactured. It's... It's when the realities of the Easter season come to life that, that it produces a sense of joy in us. So I think that's one element of being an Easter people. One of my biggest challenges in Easter, you know, I've shared how much I hate Lent, yeah. and I still do. Uh-huh. Um, Lent, Lent seems to have, at least for me, so many concrete things to do. And, you know, I, I get really focused on, okay, I'm going to pray longer, I'm going to fast more, I'm going to, you know, give alms. You know, I try to, I try to hit everything. And then there's a way that you kind of get, at least for me, I get to Easter. Oh, I'm so glad that's done. Yeah. You know, but then like a week later, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm not praying as much as, and I'm not thinking as much. You know, and I just think, well, I should be doing more now, right? Or at least there should be something. I mean, I think we can get so caught up in the Lenten part, and then Easter can almost feel like, oh, okay, it's just back to normal. But it shouldn't be back to normal, right? I mean, there's something more to it. No, no. And that's where I think we said at the beginning is that if our Lenten sacrifices don't change us and transform mm-hmm. us, it's just exercises we just check off a box. So what does it, li- what does it mean to live as, as a, a people that believe in faith and, and, and that the, the, our Lenten sacrifices has actually had a part or had an impact in our life? And that's really what has to be reconciled is – is what difference does the resurrection make? We we can focus a lot on the cross, and we can we can associate ourselves and connect ourselves to the cross and the suffering, but we also ought to be able to have that same desire to focus with the resurrection. I mean, what does it live? What does it look like to live more freely? Yeah, you know that that Jesus defeated the power of death. He defeated the power of sin. He defe- and and what does it look like concretely to live more freely? Those are things that we have to do. And and part of that is, is again, it's one of the things I like about being Catholic is to spend a moment or two doing something that you just enjoy. Yeah. You know, that that a celebration and a relaxing um, a hobby or whatever it is or something like that. So we 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 punish ourselves and we do penance some sometimes pretty well. But we don't celebrate as well. Yeah. We don't celebrate as well and I think that's something that we need to learn to do. Or sometimes we might see something as a punishment that should be a celebration. Yeah, I mm-hmm. remember uh, many years ago I'm I'm now really blessed living in Steubenville so many options for liturgy. I get to go to Mass pretty much every day, ironically, unless I have diaconate formation. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then I can't some, fit some, in that something day. Something needs to look at your <laughs> yeah, guys' schedule. Anyway, anyway. Um, but um, I, I, years and years ago, I decided for Lent, I'm going to go to Mass every day. And it was hard, you know, it, but it was great. And I, I got done through Lent, and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that's over. And then it hit me as I was in Easter, like, you know, maybe I should, like, keep going to Mass, <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And maybe I shouldn't look at mass as like such a choice. I mean, it was really offering. revealing yeah, yeah, in yeah, my yeah, heart. Yeah, I mean, yeah. gosh, this is when I this is maybe this was even before I got married. You know, it was I was it was just kind of a reveal for me, like, huh, something I thought was a sacrifice I should actually think is kind of cool. Yeah. Um and, and it makes you I think relook at 
relook at some of those things. But I think that that goes to exactly what you're talking about is that that transformation and the change of our heart. Yeah. That that it right that it's not it's not an offering it's not a penitential thing but it's actually something to be celebrated. Yeah. But I, I think that that is the challenge for us is is practically speaking what does it look like how does our life look differently obviously as a church we we dress differently whereas before we we're wearing penitential colors now we're wearing white if that's the only difference yeah then, then we probably need to look at, at what's going on in our life and, and and what are these seasons doing for us so i think one of the things it could do is is in in the lenten season what are we looking at we're looking at the desert uh, we're praying through through the uh, temptations. We're praying through sacrifice. We're praying through penance. Well, maybe in this time we can think about uh, the empty tomb and what does that mean. Mm-hmm. We can think about new life and what does that mean. We can think about is, is what we're preparing for a Pentecost. What does that yeah. mean? We can we can take a look at some of the characters and and the change that took place in their life. I mean, I love wa- watching Paul. You see the change that takes place in Paul yeah. when he encounters Jesus, and and experiences the redeeming grace of Jesus. So same thing in our own life is look for stories like that. I love the stories this week and the daily readings of Peter and John uh, when they healed the cripple. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes we can miss the drama of that moment. Just That's a I'm, few uh, weeks after the resurrection, Peter is standing in front of the exact same Sanhedrin, the exact same Sanhedrin, probably in the exact same place where Jesus stood and they condemned him to death. And this is where he said, I do not know the man. I mean, this is when he denied him. And now he's standing up in front of him saying like, well, here's the problem. This, if you're wondering what happened to this cripple, it was from Jesus, the Messiah whom you killed. And they were stunned that they only got like whipped. I mean, he was probably thinking, well, I guess I'm going to the cross now, you know, yeah, yeah. but he was, he was ready after such a short period of time through the power of the Holy Spirit. It was like, Okay, I'm next. And he was stunned when they were like, uh, just stop doing that. What? <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And and then one of the scriptures was when they came back, they worshiped so hard the walls shook in the house. I mean, that's that's Easter joy right there. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. just celebrating and worshiping God. So come Holy Spirit. I think that's yeah, another beautiful yeah, thing you yeah. just said for me. You know, what are we you know, sometimes in Lent it's it's we're looking forward to Holy Week. What are we doing in Easter? We're really looking forward to Pentecost. Mm-hmm. You know, the fullness of the outpouring of everything that Jesus did for us in His cross and His resurrection and His ascension, our adoption into the family yeah, of God. Yeah, it's it's interesting though because I was reflecting on just that that time that we kind of find ourselves in between the resurrection and Pentecost. And when you take a look at some of the texts in the scriptures, I find it interesting that, that the disciples they go fishing. <laughs> like they just don't know what to do, right? Yeah. There's there's this sense of there's this void. I mean, they had spent all this time with Jesus. He was the center and the focus of their life, and right now he's not there. And Peter's like, I'm going fishing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. And then you've got Mary Magdalene, and I just think it's just a beautiful image of Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, and and she doesn't know what else to do. So she goes and tells Peter and John, and they come back and they look in and they don't see and they leave. And then the next place we see Mary Magdalene again is at the tomb. She just doesn't know what to do because he's mm. gone, right? And, and I think that's something for us to wrestle with is is in this time of resurrection, Pentecost, what are we going to do with it, right? Yeah. Don't just, well, it's okay to go fishing. Actually. It's okay to go I, fishing. When in doubt, that's never a bad option. You know? But but not go back to what we were right, doing exactly. before Lent. Right. I mean, that's the message there. Exactly, yeah. exactly, is, is that they just kind of, what was that? Sorry, I guess I... What was that? Did you hear that? Did people hear that ding? Yes, it's it's impossible mm-hmm. to imagine what that possibly could have been. There goes the podcast. <laughs> just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were they were on the edge of their seat. I, uh, I think if you think the podcast just left, you've... Uh, yeah. you, this pod, Elvis has left the building quite a while ago. Um, hey, let's talk about a good friend of ours, Mark Joseph, because he's got a really cool website. Uh, Mark Joseph Ministries. Mark Joseph is the, what's his position? Vice President, Christian Outreach Evangelization. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Oh, he he actually wrote something for me. Have you ever felt stressed, exhausted, even overwhelmed? Yes. How come every promo begins with a question? Because it causes Did you notice how I just did a question there? I don't know. Why do you think, Danny? (laughs) Wait, you're not Dave. (laughs) I'm Dave. It's really late, everybody, so what are you drinking? Okay, how about being challenged and finding peace or purpose to life? Mark Joseph 
the university's vice president for outreach and evangelization. Uh, wrote a book on the subject, given his life, giving, uh, given his life experiences and lessons learned, published by our Sunday visitor. It's called Overwhelming Pursuit, Stop Chasing Your Life and Live. Given the interest Mark has received, he's launching a course to help people understand why they are the way they are and how to overcome it, landing at a place of peace, joy, and fulfillment, all by God's grace. He's put together a free webinar on this, and you can check it out at Mark Joseph Ministries. Dot com. That's markjosephministries.com. Free webinar. His book is really wonderful. Uh, there's a free ebook on his website. He's really just trying to help people out. That's awesome. But you can buy the book on his website. And if you use the coupon no, code no, are you serious? Dave and Bob, you get like two bucks off or something. Wait, like that. it's a free book and it's you a need free a co- ebook. Oh, okay. The ebook's free, but okay. if you want, if you're like one of those people that I just need to hold the book, then you can <coughs> you can order it and you can get it there. And it's a cool book. Dave and Dave and Bob. Dave and Bob. Now MonkManual.com, so CatholicBeardBomb.com. Seriously, Bob, we are Mark Joseph it. Ministries. We are crushing we are this. We are huge. Crushing this. One of the things I love about Mark's book, um, I got a chance to read it early on, and Mark has a lot of funny phrases. He's a he's a Pittsburgher, a, a really great business guy, wonderful testimony. One, well, he actually gave his testimony for those of you who watched our second night of hope, our Advent night of hope. He gave a very powerful. Yeah powerful witness about how he, you know, just used to live for success and money and business, and the Lord really turned his life around. And he's got like a bunch of funny phrases. One is, you know, make sure that your who is not your do. Uh, and, um, but my favorite one is he talks about finding, uh, living for not the pace, but the peace. And I remember I, even just years ago when I read that and I thought, man, I really do busy my schedule up a lot. I, I'm, I'm, I almost feel like if I'm the busier I am, the more successful I am, the more I'm liked, the more I'm doing well. And like even just that idea of am I living for pace or am I living for peace, that that really blessed my I life. I remember I was at a secular conference one time, and the keynote speaker began by saying that uh, she was she quit taking pride in her busyness. Yeah. And she was, that was her point was that, like, I'm just so busy. Everybody right. wants me. Everybody right. needs me, you know, and— and she realized, wow, that's really prideful. And then and, and that's... that's yeah, And then that's you're awesome. eager to tell people how busy you are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I yeah. found it in my own life. And I realized it was more... It was a boast. Yeah, I you remember... Know, like, oh, I, I'm, I'm so busy. And I, even now, like today, this day when people come up to me, they're like, I know you're really busy. And I go, oh, I don't want you to know I'm really busy. Well, And, the, and I don't want to be it's, really it's, busy. No, but the, no, it's, it's actually one of our friars, I thought he handled this really, really well. Somebody said to him, I don't want to bother you. I know you're really busy. And he said, let me determine that. Hmm. And the other thing he said is, you know, who's not busy? Yep. Most of the time we are busy, except I will tell a story. So I was a novice and um, yeah, this was just awful. I was a novice and we were doing some ministry and we we're visiting a re- an old, old folk home retirement home. And th- there was no real training about how we should do it. But they said, just go in and just talk to the people. Right. Just be. Right. Just be. So I walk in and, and there's uh, two elderly ladies and I walked in and, you know, I'm just, hi, I'm brother. I was brother at the time. Hi, I'm brother Dave. How are you doing? Little chit chat. I said, So are you keeping busy? Well, one of them's like, starts bawling. It's like, Oh, I wish we were busy. I wish there was anything to do. All we do is sit here all day. So I was like, Note to self. <laughs> Never yeah, ask. Keeping busy is not the question to ask. <laughs> so maybe some aren't so busy. Well, the other side of that here is, and I don't want to like totally just throw out everything that we just said. But there's, something, but there's something scriptural about that. Jesus says that if we're faithful to the small things, it'll give us more. So I remember actually uh, a priest who used to be on campus was talking about that. And when I was in student, I thought I was busy. But his point was that, was that you know, if you're faithful to little things, yeah. God will continue to give you more. Now, the question is, and it's really what, what I wrestle with as a friar, and, and I've got this little thing on my wall that's from the rule of St. Francis for my community, and it says, do not let work extinguish the spirit of holy prayer. Mm. And that's really the challenge for myself as a friar. I mean, I, I just just meeting with a visitor that was on campus, and yeah, we were just talking about things going on. And he goes, are you ever able like to join the friars in prayer and dinner? And I said, yeah, all the time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's my life. That 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 would be like you never having a meal with your family or never spending time with your family. I said, all the time. So it's... Yes, we're busy, but it's also priorities, and, and what are, we always make time for priorities, those things which are most important for you us. You know, maybe it'd be better to use, I, I like to think of there's a, there's a difference between being active and being busy. 
you know, because um, we're active, you know, and we have yeah. things to do. Yeah. And, um, but I think it's, again, I think it's, well, it goes back to one of the other phrases that Mark uses, don't let your who be defined by what you do. You know, when we feel so compelled in the stuff that we're doing, that it really drives us away from who we are, mm -hmm. who we are before God, uh, who we are in our vocation. You know, that's when it like becomes that idea of the the busyness. And, and then you start saying, I don't have time to do the things I want to do or I should do. I'm too busy. You mm -hmm. know, and one of the most common things is I'm too busy for prayer. You right, know, right, when right. we were made for prayer. Well, and I think that does go to may maybe what we were talking about earlier about the Easter is, is take a look at your time and do some things that are just more more relaxing and, and more, yeah, yeah th that you just enjoy. But the other part is, and I totally lost my train oh. of thought. Well, I can say Absolutely. something that I was thinking as you were okay, saying. Okay, okay. Um, one of the things I do with my students is um, in my leadership class for youth ministry, we read through Seven Habits of a Highly mm -hmm. Effective Person. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he has is a whole thing on time management, which I find really fascinating. And he, he segments all of our activities into four different quadrants. Um, quadrant one are the things that are urgent and important. Quadrant two are the things that are not urgent but important. Quadrant three are the things that are not urgent. No, they are urgent but not important. And then quadrant four are not urgent, not important. Nobody cares. Right? I know. Well, but interestingly no, nobody enough, cares those last points, yeah. Well, but they do in the sense that, like, a lot of what comes through our cell phones are urgent, not important. It, we have the text, bing, something yeah. hit us on Facebook, bing, like it's vibrating. It's like a child that needs to be held. And I find this particular, not just younger students, everybody does this. Like we'll, we will, I know many times we've been in this experience and I've done this too. I'm talking to somebody and my phone vibrates and I go, oh, hold on. Like suddenly the person in front of me no. is not as valuable Don't do as. That. Don't do that. Yeah, Bob. I've stopped doing that. Good. I've stopped doing that. But it's a. It's a temptation, sure, sure, sure. you know, and it's easy to say, oh, wait, I, this might be important. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be what's happening right now. Yeah, is important. yeah the person in front of But Covey's whole point is the non-urgent important activities should be the heart of our life. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff that isn't Im demanding immediate attention. And this is things like prayer, mm -hmm. um, you know, physical activity, uh, building relationships. Otherwise, you're always fighting fires. That becomes the urgent, important. And, and then he says people that live in the urgent and important world, they end up falling into the non-urgent, non-important. They just they go back and forth from like work, 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 work. Oh, veg, you know. And when I talk with my students and I have them try to think of like what would be that quadrant two activity, I say things like you can watch some TV if you want. Just maybe not binge watch TV. Right, right, you know, like you can, hours, right. you can, you can, relationships with friends, all these things like – like create your ideal, this is what I'd like to get done, and then try to do it. But that's all, I think, in that perspective of the difference of activity and busyness and living out what God is calling us to do. And it goes back to, honestly, what we're talking about these two people. I have given penance on telling somebody to do something that they enjoy. Hmm. And it's really funny. I mean, I need part, to go to confession to you. Part, well, the thing is, is I think that, again, we, we do a better job at kind of punishing ourselves rather than than celebrating almost as if it's bad it's it's yeah you know if we're really if, if we're really holy or something like that we're we're just going to always do penance and and penance is, needs to be a part of our life but but those so does celebrating and so does relaxing and so does just doing things quote unquote wasting time with other people and and just to be able to yeah the whole the whole idea of being so busy that we can't spend 20 minutes with somebody that we care for and, right. just, and just be able to yeah, kind of lavish on one another. And, and I think we, we live in a country that measures worth by busyness and measures worth by that rather than just, you know, bigger is better, right. more. And just it's just it's pretty messed up. So I guess that might be our challenge for the day as we close out our podcast. Um, really just praying through. You know, how might you be active and yet not busy? How can you live as a people of the resurrection? So much of the early church community was about loving each other, was about community, was about, uh, you know, celebrating the Easter joy. It wasn't without its struggles, if anything. Um, you know, that early Christian community was way more persecuted after the resurrection 
than they were before, and yet they were a lot happier. They were filled with the peace. They were filled with the hope of mm-hmm. God. And so just, you know, maybe just a, a word to all of you that are still really in difficult situations, still struggling. Maybe it's something exterior. Maybe it's the COVID situation or your state lockdowns or your kids are being homeschooled. Maybe it's something interior. Maybe it's relationships that you're dealing with at home or sickness or whatever those things that are going on. Um, but just to have that hope in uh, the resurrected power of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit and, um, I don't know, just maybe living in that joy and living in that hope somehow. Yeah, it's funny. Just on, on the way back you know, when I was traveling today, somebody said that that happiness, there there has to be a decision to to be happy. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes, I, and, and I don't want to make it like the right. elixir, I just, no, I'm going to make a decision to be happy. No, I mean, that's not that easy. But that has to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, that to go with our theme, I guess, of the day is that we decide we are going to be an Easter people, you know, that we are going to be people of the resurrection, and that is going to impact the way we relate and the way we talk about to other people, how we spend our time, how we spend our free time, how we worship. We need to make that decision and then live that out, begin to live that out. What does that look like? And be, yeah, like you're saying, be concrete, be practical, that today you're going to spend 15 minutes with, with your favorite kid, which would be, <laughs> yeah, that, that should go over well. Listening to this podcast, we hope, is a source of joy and uh, reflection and encouragement. Can we for talk you. about that sometime later? What? A favorite kid. Let's let's put that in the back. I yeah. think we need to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. After your what color lightsaber would you have? I don't want to go there now. Yeah. Because I want we viewers. We want people to come back. We, we want people to come back. Yeah. So um Listen, if anyone's still listening, God bless you. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Sometimes, you know. This is why you don't plug us at the end. No, I This know. is the exact reason why you do it in the beginning. And this is also before why you, 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 this is also why you don't horrible. do a podcast late at night when you've had a really long day. Oh, amen to so that. So let's pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, for, for both of the people that listen to the end of this, we <laughs> just women. ask you to bless both of them. <laughs> Probably some place that have nothing else to do. With some old they folks can't on. reach the off button, and they're forced to listen to it on a playlist. Lord, we just thank you for the call that you placed in our life, and that we are an Easter people, and that means that you fill us with your joy and your presence, and you fill us with hope, and you fill us with light. And we look to you. We look forward to what you're doing in our life, and we look forward to how you're working in our life. Bless both of our listeners this day, Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Dave, and thank you for hanging in there. Hey, send us an email at hope at franciscan.edu. Let us know what kind of quiz uh, somebody would take after listening to this podcast to get a degree in anything. God bless. God bless.